Have you ever felt completely stuck as a musician, that you're just not improving at all? In this video, I'm going to share the story of how I made one of my biggest breakthroughs in my playing, and I'm going to look at what are the general principles behind that that you can pull out and use to get similar breakthroughs for yourself. And make sure to stick around to the end, because after I've gone through how I made such a big leap forward, I'll go over the three traps that might get in the way when you try and do this for yourself, and I'll tell you how you can avoid them. Now, I'm going to talk you through one particular situation that I was in, and that was being asked to play a solo guitar set at a good friend's wedding. And the big picture here is that what really made the difference was saying yes to something really adventurous and scary for me, which pushed the boundaries of what I knew I was capable of. It was clearly a step up, and having to make that step up and commit to it in advance was what really helped me to push through to a new level. Because here I was getting asked to play this solo jazz guitar set, and I had never done anything on that sort of scale before. I had to put together a whole hour's worth of repertoire. I had pretty much none, maybe just one piece to start with. Really getting down my technique and all those aspects for the solo guitar repertoire was not something I had done either. So in many ways, this was just way outside my comfort zone. But that is exactly what I needed to do, a big challenging project to take things to the next level. So how does taking on something big and challenging like that help? I reckon there are at least four areas in which it really provides you a boost. And the first one of those is it gives you focus. So at the time, and frankly still for me, there are so many things I could be working on, things that I find really interesting. There's that solo guitar stuff we're talking about here. There's improvising solos, jazz solos. There's playing in bands and comping, playing chords behind the other players. There's all just the working on technique. There's a whole load of other smaller things I'm interested in. And all of these things have a tendency to divide my focus. Uh, quite possibly on a daily basis, but certainly on a week-to-week on a -week basis, interest will kind of zip in and out of them. And that's great, but you can really get more progress a lot of the time if you focus on these things in blocks. So if I really give a good solid piece of time to one area for a bit and dig deep into that until I've made a good step forward, and then maybe I'll move on to some of the others, come back to it. And having this deadline to go and play at a wedding was fantastic for making me focus because it suddenly became clear that if I dabbled around and did a bit of everything, I just wasn't going to be ready in time. I just wasn't going to give the performance that I wanted to. So having something that was a big ask and having something where it was really pushing me beyond what I was already capable of just required me to focus in on that area and that was going to turn into really big progress. And the second way that it really helped me was it forced me to make very specific decisions. Even just focusing in on solo jazz guitar, there's a huge amount of stuff that I could work on. But because I had a deadline when I had to show up and have a certain amount of repertoire ready, that was one of the areas straight there. I had to pick what repertoire I was going to work with pretty soon and get on with it. And it gave me some criteria as well. I couldn't just pick stuff that I thought, oh, I'd love to be able to play that someday, way beyond the level of what I can do right now. That wasn't going to be any good. It had to be things that were achievable. So I had to make a list of the things I was going to go with, and I would test some of them out. And if some of them turn out to be a little bit too difficult, well, then maybe I had to swap them out. If it looked like I just wasn't going to get enough of them ready in time, maybe I had to cut down the repertoire, but it forced me to make those decisions rather than wanting to keep all my options open, which is really common for us to want to do. And also, the other thing that I focused on really improving was my right hand technique, so plucking the strings finger style for guitar, which I, I didn't do a lot of the time in some of the other stuff I was playing. And again, all sorts of areas of technique that I could have worked on, but because I had a specific deadline and a specific set of things I had to deliver, I was forced to make some decisions. What am I going to do? What am I not going to do? And then again, even within that technique, 
it's really easy to get caught up on, well, I can get better and better forever. So let's just drop everything else and just keep going at the technique on and on and on because I want it to be perfect. But again, remember, I had all that repertoire that I needed to get up. So I had to balance things. I had to accept, OK, a certain amount of work on that technique is going to be really useful for me. But beyond that, actually, I don't need to go any further. I need to sort out the repertoire and my ability to play it in challenging circumstances. So going from our natural tendency to want to do everything and keep our options open, having this big challenging goal forced me to get very specific about exactly what I was going to do and to measure, am, am I getting there? Am I going to get there in time? Is, is this the right things to choose? And the third thing that a big scary goal is really good for is motivation and discipline. Now, some of it comes from the fear that you won't be ready, but hopefully if you've picked something really good, there should be some positive motivation there as well. So, for example, I, I really wanted to get up there and give a great performance and support my friends at their wedding and you know feel like I played great music. So there was definitely that positive thing, but I'm not going to deny that there is uh, that fear that I wouldn't be ready. So that was a really good motivation to practice and to be disciplined. And actually, discipline in itself really helped. So I was working a full-time job at the time, but I knew that in order to be ready, when I came home from work every day, I was going to have to do some serious practice every day without fail. And OK, it was easy enough to do because I had that motivation there, but actually the discipline itself and knowing that this discipline was necessary really helped because it took choice out of it. It wasn't a question of, well, maybe I'll practice today if I feel like it and maybe I won't. Rather, it was, OK, this is something I'm going to be doing every day. No need to decide. Just get home. Let's get practicing. And you get so much done when you're in that situation. And the fourth and final area where having a big scary goal really helps is it allows you to make really big steps in places where you're not really going to get there by just taking one little step, another little step, another little step. And that was definitely the case for what I was trying to do here. I wanted to be able to play solo guitar sets in the future, but it always seemed like too much of a big ask because just getting a little bit better at technique or just working out one, maybe two songs never felt like enough to to have that tangible result when, when I'd achieved that thing. So although for years beforehand, it had been within my grasp if I'd said, you know what, I'm going to set aside a few months to really get there, I didn't, I didn't have the drive to do that. So having said yes before I knew I could do it, to turn up and play this gig, that put me in the situation where all of a sudden I was ready and willing to do the work to take that big step to that point where I had a whole solo guitar set I could deliver rather than me sitting there with nothing and just the individual little steps in between, none of them were desirable enough for me to make that transition. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that there are some very specific benefits that you get from taking on a project like this, going after something big and challenging. And the first of those is a real sense of achievement. So once you get to the end and you've done it, you can look back at all that hard work you've put in, all the progress you've made and feel genuinely proud of what you've done, really not to be underestimated. The second thing that is going to come out of this is it's going to increase your sense of self-belief. Because remember, what we're looking at here is taking on something where we're not sure beforehand that we're guaranteed to be able to do it. So when you get to the end and you realize that you've made it work, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you've done it absolutely perfectly, it just means that you've been able to get there and get through it, you can look back and say, yeah, you know what? I took on something challenging. I took on something that I didn't know I could do, and I achieved it. And every time you do something like that, you get a little bit stronger self-belief because you know that you are someone who can take on challenges and meet them. And finally, there's the reward that you are now going to be at a new level of playing that you simply wouldn't have reached otherwise. When you've taken on one of these big challenges, 
This is, as I said, what allows you to take a big leap forward rather than little steps. And often that is just such a, a huge change in your playing and, and what you believe you're capable of and in your enjoyment of that. So something that it left me with after playing that solo guitar gig at the wedding was all of a sudden I had so many more options open to me. I could say yes to just going and, and playing another solo guitar gig on much less short, on much shorter notice this time because I had the repertoire, I had the skills in place. I could do that incremental practice and add one song at a time, a little bit more technique at a time and build on what I had and do a whole lot more with it. It just opened so many doors that wouldn't have been there without taking on the big project. But I just want to go over now three traps that can stop you from getting out there and actually taking on projects like this. And the first is thinking to yourself, oh, I'm not sure that I can do this. And that is very normal. And I'm afraid that's just the way it's going to go. In fact, that's kind of part of the point because it is getting outside your comfort zone and taking on something that is really big and you can't be 100% sure beforehand whether you'll do it. That's, that's what really is going to drive you to the next level. And the way I want you to think about it is being ambitiously optimistic. So ambitiously and aggressively optimistic. So you don't want to be completely unrealistic. We're not going for something that will leave you curled up in a ball, in a fetal position on the floor, crying to yourself because you've taken on something that's clearly never going to work. But it does want to be, you know, thinking in, in the best possible world, am I, am I perhaps capable of doing this rather than can I definitely do that? And it, you will be amazed at what happens once you put yourself in that situation and you say yes to make it happen. And some of that is down to, you'll be amazed what opportunities and help arises once you've committed to something like this. And the other is the, the things we've mentioned earlier. You will find the motivation and the discipline will be there and you will get a huge amount done. And the second trap is thinking that, oh, well, I shouldn't do this because I'm not going to be able to get it perfect. And it, it doesn't need to be perfect. The aim here is to get it good enough to work, to get the job done because this is all about getting you up to a whole new level, remember? And it's not about necessarily being perfect at that level straight away. Once you've taken that big step to a new place, you've got all the time in the world afterwards to work on doing that incremental practice that is going to get where you've got to, to a much higher quality level or, or have everything that you want. But in order to get there first time, you're probably going to have to accept that it won't be perfect to start with. And so for me, playing this gig at the wedding, I didn't get to choose all the repertoire that I would have liked to. There were pieces I really wanted to play that were just too challenging to get done in the time. There were ones that, you know, I, I really would rather not have had as my repertoire. They weren't my favourite ones, but that was doable and it gave me something I could work with. So I had to go for less than perfect there. And in terms of the technique as well, uh, how well I'd practised these things, to get a whole hour long set all ready at once, I just had to accept I wasn't going to get every tiny detail of it perfect this first time. But what it did get me round to was I had that baseline to build on. So once I'd done it the first time, I could do it again, get slightly better. I could bring in slightly more difficult pieces one at a time, but in order to get there in the first place, I had to make that big jump and I had to accept that it wasn't all going to be perfect. And the third trap that you might be tempted to fall into is not doing something like this because it feels like it's restricting you. It's committing you to just this one particular path and cutting you off from all those other things that you'd really like to do. And this is perfectly normal, but it's not actually the case. There is nothing to stop you going on and doing those other things afterwards. And just because you've spent whatever it is, a couple of months maybe really focusing on one thing doesn't mean that you've got to stick with that forever. It doesn't mean that the other things you haven't worked on for a while are going to disappear off your radar or you're going to lose all your ability in them. You'll still be able to pick them up again. So when I spent a couple of months literally practicing nothing else but solo guitar pieces and working on those over and over, I was, to be honest, a little bit sick of it. 
after I'd given the given the performance. And so I didn't even pick those up again for probably at least a month afterwards, did totally different things, and it was fine. They were still there. I hadn't forced myself into this box where everyone would say, oh, Mark, he only does this and he's not at all interested in doing other things. Life went on. I was able to yeah, go and go and do those other bits and it didn't didn't restrict me at all in the end. That's what worked for me. And I'd, I'd love to hear what worked for you as well. So why not let me know in the comments below where your biggest leaps forward in music have come from?